Visa Yab Migration Services, managed by Dr. Siros Ahmadi, invite you to watch the community TV show. Knowing the history of the country you live in is very important, especially for the immigrants who are choosing a new country to call their home. That's why we are at the Auckland Art Gallery Centre here in New Zealand and we're going to have a chat with Mrs. Frug Emin. She's going to tell us more about the New Zealand history and her foundation. So let me take you there and we will have a chat with her now. Hello, Mrs. Amin, and thank you very much for joining us in this interview. It's a pleasure to have you on. Um, before we get started, could you please tell us a little bit about your occupation and when you decided to move to New Zealand? Uh, sure. Thank you for having me here. And uh, my name is Farooq. I'm originally from Iran, and uh, I've been in New Zealand since 2015. So um, regarding occupation, I can say currently I'm occupied with two separate but related paths of career. So I'm the founder and the chair for Iranian organization, Iranian women organization in New Zealand that was founded in 2020, a very young organization. And beside that, so my husband and I are running a startup business called Justry. Uh, that's a platform, a digital platform for migrant communities. So it is a platform that helps migrants communities get the services they need from providers who speak their language. So basically the idea behind this startup business is just to remove the language as a barrier from lives of migrants. So as I said, two separate careers, but both of them related to communities. Of course, that's fascinating. As you know, we're in the beautiful Auckland Art Gallery, and I'm wondering if you can take us a little bit deeper into the origins and the history of New Zealand and the Maori people? Sure, I don't have that wealth of knowledge about history, but as much as I know, the first uh, settlers of New Zealand were ancestors of the Maori. So they were people coming from Polynesia. They were, I think, just exploring the Pacific, you know, like navigating by star, by winds and currents, and then they arrive in New Zealand around 13th or 14th century. And after that, like 400 years after that, people who arrived here were Dutch. So the Dutch explorer who came here, I think around like 17th century. And the interesting thing is that the name New Zealand was given to this beautiful country by the Dutch map maker. So, um, Apparently, there is a province in Netherlands, in Holland, called Zealand. And this map maker, when he arrived here, I think he found this place very similar to the Dutch province. So he called it New Zealand, and that's how the name came from. And after that, I think around 150 years after that, the British Captain Cook, he arrived here with his crew. And it was after that time, I think around the 17th century, that gradually more and more European migrated here to New Zealand. And it was in mid 19th century in 1841 when the government in the Britain, so they decided to uh, sign a treaty with the chiefs of Maori. So it was called Treaty of Waitangi. And it was the time that they signed this agreement to all of them living under the same law. Well, that's actually really fascinating because as opposed to Persia over 9,000 years of history, New Zealand has around 380 years worth of history and um, anything that's been recorded. Yeah, I think so. So as you said, uh, Persia or old Iran is a very, very old country uh, with about 10,000 years of history. And in case of New Zealand, it depends if we look at the early settlement here, 
that dates back to about 900 years ago when the ancestors of Maori came here, or if we look at the European settlement here. So since then, yeah, we can say that uh, you know, the establishment of the government here, the history is just less than uh, 200 years. But you know, uh, for me, what matters when it comes to history, uh, it's not the numbers, you know, it, it is what we get from the history, you know, the lessons that we learn from the history. And I think New Zealand and Iran are good proof to that. So I'm really proud of living here in New Zealand because as you know, New Zealand is the first place in the world, so a very young country, in less than 50 years after establishment of the government, they gave the women their right to vote. So women's suffrage was first introduced here in New Zealand. It was the first country before Australia, before you know, Britain and other countries. So these are the good things that, you know, if the history can give us these kind of things, then we should really be proud of. Wow, no, thank you very much for that. And actually, your answer brings me back uh, to another question I have in mind. What made you uh, build and start your organization for Iranian women in New Zealand? Oh, well, so as I said, I came here in 2015. Uh, the first few years was not you know, easy at all. So I felt lonely, homesick, you know, desperate, hopeless. So, and it also made me to go back to Iran, actually, in the middle of my PhD studies. So I left everything, I went back to Iran. Finally, I could manage to get the PhD. But yeah, I'm just saying that it was really difficult. But when I came back here about three years ago, everything was totally different. So uh, the world, you know, around me was the same. It was me who had changed. So. I had married to a man who I can say is the, you know, the greatest blessing in my life. And I was pregnant with my baby girl. So many things had changed. I had uh, you know, gone through a kind of spiritual transformation, if I can call it. So after that, actually a few months after having my baby, I just decided to review again and you know, make a decision about what I'm gonna do from now on. So, as a part of those changes that happened inside me, there was a decision to leave university because I used to teach at university for about 10, 11 years. So I just decided to leave academia and be more involved in the community, especially with women, because you know the main idea was to help women not go through the experiences that I went through, you know, like all those uh, loneliness and you know homesickness. So yeah, I decided to start this women group, and I didn't expect it actually to be so much well, you know, embraced by Iranian women here. Thank you so much for sharing that. Well, we're not done yet. I still have many more questions for you. But before we go, would you like to take a walk through the art gallery and see some of the paintings? Yeah, sure. That would be great. Of course, because I actually saw this painting, which is the Lake Wakatipo in New Zealand in the South Island of the Otago region, which is beautiful. And there are many more beautiful paintings like this one. So yeah, shall we take a walk? Definitely. Perfect. Thank you. So the tour, it was beautiful. It was, it was Paintings, really good. photography, everything. It was just that from local artists to small artists, yeah. big artists. It's really nice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was really rich. Yeah, every piece of art was unique and you know, it has some meaning behind that, of course. Exactly, and I think the people from our community actually should um, come in from the Persian community and view these arts and really experience New Zealand and 
get to know a little bit more about it. Yeah, definitely. I recommend all Iranians living here in Oakland coming and visit the art gallery. Exactly. And I'm excited because I have a few more questions for you. Sure. Um, and it's mostly about your accomplishments and your achievements. So could you please just share with us a little bit what have you achieved and your accomplishments um, within the Persian community in New Zealand? Well, I'm not sure if we can call it accomplishments or not, but we have been making an effort, you know, to bring Iranian women together. So we have been trying different programs and activities. But behind all these activities, we have been pursuing two important goals. One has been encouraging more empathy among Iranian women, or I can say Farsi speaking women here in New Zealand, just bringing them together and also empowering them. So we are just trying to raise our voice, to raise our awareness and just to become more empowered through the activities that we are doing. Yeah, and you know, if I'm gonna talk about accomplishment, the best thing that I think we have achieved in these two years is that uh, we have given our women a place, a center, you know, somewhere to refer to. Uh, I doesn't mean necessarily, I don't mean necessarily like a physical place, although we have a small office, but mainly like, you know, some kind of uh, place that they know exists if they need something, you know, when they need some advice or help or anything, they know that there are other women there, you know, available for them to ask for help. So that's, that's the best thing that I think that has happened as a result of having such organization. Wow, that's very inspirational. And do you think that uh, Persian people are quite active within the Persian community here? Or if they're not, could, how could they be more active? Well, I think there is a huge interest, you know, in having different community activity here in, uh, among the Iranian Persian uh, community here. But, you know, because of the COVID situation, so I think around two years ago, we had a very big New Year celebration here. So some wonderful women, they just came together and they hold this uh, New Year celebration here. But then COVID came and last year we couldn't, actually this year, we couldn't have this uh, celebration again. But there has been very good steps, you know, taken by different groups here. We have several radios now here in New Zealand. We have some schools, some academies. So many people in different cities, we are all working together just to, you know, find a way to introduce our cultural heritage to the New Zealand society. So things are getting better. Yeah. So of course, and I think if the New Zealand government could provide a little bit more support to the Persian community, they can really put some more educational programs, uh, social events to get us more closer, to get us more involved, to get us more active in the social society within New Zealand. Would you agree with me? Yeah, yeah, totally agree with you. And I think the government has been doing a great job, you know, supporting ethnic communities, including our Persian community here. Of course. So we know that many Persian women, even in Iran, around the country, in Afghanistan, and all the way around all the cities, we know they're not being treated equally. We know they're being downgraded, and we know that they're not being appreciated as much as they should. So what do you think we can do to limit that, and what do you think we can do to help women and to give them the power they deserve? Yeah, I agree that the situation for women in Iran or in the Middle East is not good and not just for women, even for men, you know, totally. But when it comes to women and when I'm asked this question that what we can do to support women, I think the problem here is not just the government, it's not just the politics, you know, the problem is the society, is the culture. So I think the problem is inside us, you know, this patriarchal mindset that we all hold kind of, you know, the gender biases that we have been taught since our very, very early childhood, you know, growing up as a girl or as a boy, you know, living in a society like Middle Eastern societies, or I can say, you know, through the whole world, it's just like a matter of degree, you know, that women are not given their rights equally like men. So everything goes back to the mindset, to the way that we see women and also we treat women. So for example, just imagine the relationship in a family between you know, a man and a woman. So you know, I can say that I support women, but when it comes to actual, you know, taking actual steps, like for example, with your wife, what do you think? Is it your wife's responsibility to take care of kids, to do the cooking or all the household chores? And what you are doing is just kind of kindness? 
towards your women or it is your woman or it is your responsibility as well. So I think everything goes back to, you know, these beliefs and attitudes that we are holding. If we want to support women, no matter if I'm a woman or man, I just need to review my beliefs and my, you know, my biases. And if I can fix them, then I think automatically women will be supported. Yeah. Well, that was an inspirational story and thank you so much for sharing that because you've been through hardships and you've struggled, but you managed to rise through the ashes like a phoenix, be reborn and share your experiences with many women across New Zealand, especially Persian women, and telling them that you can have power, you can have equal rights and thank you for supporting them. So. Thank you so much for doing this interview with me. Thank you for all the compliments. Thank you very much. And I'm really hopeful for the future of women, especially Iranian Persian women. Thank of you. Course. Thank, Thank you, you for having me here. Welcome to Rumi Restaurant. In our warm and fascinated Persian design restaurant, you can taste the real homemade Persian cuisines and feel our tradition. You have the fresh air outdoor seating option at Rumi or experience our delicious Persian dishes inside the restaurant. Kebabs are our suggestions, but we also cook other Persian cuisines and bring it to your table to enjoy. Book your table now at rumi.co.nz Where would you like to live? Where is your second home? How far would you care to follow your dreams? Visa Yob will help you obtain visas for Australia, New Zealand, Europe and Canada. We will also support you with company registration, business investment, job offers and settlement services. We will show you the optimal path. We will walk every inch of the way with you. Choice, not chance, makes destiny.